So we begin tonight with Utah Senator Mike Lee, who sits on the Senate Judiciary Committee. Senator, good to have you with us tonight. Um, obviously, there's a lot of barbs flying back and forth and a lot of tape that gets, gets replayed on both sides on this issue. Um, but this was live earlier today. This is uh, Senator Chuck Schumer. Watch this. They are proving right now that their speeches mean nothing the moment the shoe is on the other foot. Senate Republicans should heed Leader McConnell's own words from 2013. Quote, he said, you'll regret this, and you may regret this a lot sooner than you think. I would add here just a Reuters poll, 62 percent say wait for the next president. Uh, the poll found, yeah, 62 percent of American adults agreed that the vacancy should be filled by the winner on November 3rd, 23 percent disagreed and the rest were not sure. Um, so your thoughts on all of that, Senator. Welcome. Thank you, Martha. And yeah, my first thought there is as to the poll, the one poll that matters is among U.S. senators. And you are going to have a majority of U.S. senators who believe that we need to fill this vacancy. Look, we've had 29 Supreme Court vacancies arise during presidential election years in the history of our republic. On 10 of those occasions, we had divided government. The president in charge of one party, the Senate under another. Nine out of those 10 cases, the candidate, the nominee, was rejected. 19 times of those 29, uh, there was non-divided government. In an 18 out of 19 of those times, the vacancy was filled. Well, we're following the precedent that has been set and adhered to in most cases where a vacancy arises in a presidential election year. We chose not to confirm Merrick Garland, as was our prerogative. It was divided government. We had a Democratic president. We had a Republican Senate. It was surprising to no one that we did it that way. The Democrats would have done it exactly the same way had the shoe been on the other foot. So, you know, to, not to, to go back too much, but, you know, is there any wish that at that point it had at least gone to the hearing stage so that these so that you Senate Republicans could now say we put it through the process and the vote failed? No, not at all, Martha. In fact, uh, quite to the contrary. What I said in 2016 was that it would be pointless. It would be a waste of everyone, everyone's time, including Merrick Garland. Just put him through a hearing uh, uh, when we knew that we weren't going to confirm him. We gave our advice and consent. We performed our advice and consent function by rejecting Merrick Garland. We just chose him not to run him through a hearing process when we knew the outcome at the outset. The person isn't confirmed unless the Senate votes to confirm. We chose not to do that. There's nothing in the Constitution that requires us to hold that vote or even to hold a hearing. And it would have been cruel to do so, knowing that we were going to reject it. Yeah, it, that raises an interesting point in the present. Is, is there an, an intention to hold a hearing? Will we see hearings in this nomination? Yes. Yes, we'll see hearings, and they will happen within the next few weeks. I hope, I expect, and will argue vehemently for um, completing those hearings and completing the vote before Election Day. I think it's imperative that we do so, and I think that's what will happen. So obviously there are a few names at the top of the list. Amy Coney Barrett uh, is among them. Barbara Lagoa of the 11th uh, court, uh, District Court in Atlanta. Um, also Judge Rushing is on that list. Judge Larson uh, is name and we have also seen in the mix. Who would you like to see the president pick? Well, I expect that we're going to see Amy Coney Barrett being picked by the president. And I would support that nomination wholeheartedly. She's got a proven track record. Uh, she's someone who understands the difference between judging and lawmaking. She understands that she's there to interpret the law based on what the words say, rather than on the basis of what some social scientist or lawyer might wish that it said. That's exactly the kind of person we need on the U.S. Supreme Court, and I think it will and should be her. We're told that the president will meet with Barbara Lagoa in Florida on Friday, and we heard from him just a short time ago that he will announce his decision on Saturday. Uh, we expect that to happen around 5 o'clock. Why would you say that Judge Barrett is a better choice than Judge Lagoa? Uh, Judge Barrett is someone who, throughout her entire lifetime, has devoted herself to conservative principles, including and especially to principles of textualism and of originalism. As she served as a law clerk to Justice Scalia, and it's in the mold of Justice Scalia and Justice Alito and Justice Thomas that we want President Trump to be naming replacements uh, to vacancies that occur within the Supreme Court. Amy Coney Barrett is exactly that kind of nominee. That's why I hope and expect it will be her.
All right. Um, Mike Lee, Senator, thank you very much. Good to have you with us tonight. Thank so, you, Martha. Also joining me.